Hello there. So you want to do a sugar detox, huh? And you want to know, is it better to go cold turkey or wean off, wean down, step down? It's a good question. It's a really important question, mostly because you really need to know what you're up against and what's going to happen, right? So let's start there. You will have withdrawal symptoms. And there's we have other videos on that, but Let's just name them, okay? Lethargy, headaches, you're gonna be starving. There's a lot going on. You're gonna feel this feeling of impending doom. You're gonna feel like um, you can't get out of bed in the morning. Your sleep's gonna be messed up. Um, it's really, there's just this constellation of symptoms that sugar withdrawals, sugar addiction withdrawals happen. And look, it's not the keto flu. Uh, there's, there's a lot of names out there, candida die off. There's a lot of names out there for this stuff, but in reality, it's sugar addiction withdrawals. Okay. Look, think nicotine gang, think nicotine withdrawals. It's nasty. It's not fun. There's cravings a lot. Your, you know, your, your mind just says, I have to have this. Right. And the reason you have to have it, or the reason you think you have to have it is real simple. It's because your body has been used to it, not your body body, but your brain reward chemicals, right? You're not looking, the cravings for you are not trying to get a, uh, uh, a sweet taste on your tongue. They're trying to get you to re-ingest so that you get another squirt of dopamine. And when I say dopamine, I mean the entire constellation of brain reward chemicals in your nucleus accumbens, your front lobe, your frontal brain that runs everything, runs the show. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, GABA, oxytocin, the big bonding chemical, the cannabinoid receptors, your endorphins, um, the uh, all of the almost every bodily brain body and brain reward chemical is affected by sugar. And when you pull the sugar, uh, scientifically, you over the decades, you have literally down-regulated your dopamine receptors. Again, when I say dopamine, I mean all of the things I mentioned before. Down-regulated your dopamine receptors to the point where they are you have less of them. They're thinned out. They cannot make the connections. And when you quit pounding them manually, pumping them manually with sugar, you end up with um, this, these feelings of lethargy. So let's get on to which way to do it, how to do it. A lot of people think they want to step down. They want to, you know, take a little less each day and, and, you know, get a week or two weeks down and then get down to almost zero sugar and then quit, right? Um, but I want to warn you, if you do the step down, you will eventually go through withdrawals. And it almost, honest to God, from our experience, doesn't matter that you step down. The withdrawals are going to be the withdrawals. And so then the other side of the coin is uh, cold turkey, right? Just go for it. Just get it done with, right? Rip the Band-Aid off, okay? And in a lot of ways, if you kind of understand what you're going to be up against and you have a group behind you, a support group or a one-on-one -on -one coach or someone, who, um, uh, like I said, a peer group who's done this before, just a little bit, even if they're like 30 days ahead of you or 60 days or they've had some experience in this, they can warn you that here's the biggest problem with both ways of doing this is that People unconsciously, without a little bit of education, a little bit of understanding, end up falling back because of a rationalization that's decades old, right? They've got a meeting, they've got kids, they've got some commitment, and they're in the middle of the third, the third to the fifth day is pretty nasty, okay? Um, no matter who you are, uh, your, your, your third to fifth day is kind of rough. Now, a lot of people say this is all over with in seven to 10 days. Now, I just don't believe that. And that's from tens of thousands of sugar detoxes that we've facilitated and helped people do, and thousands of written testimonials of people that have succeeded. It takes longer mentally. Now, physically, whether you go cold turkey or taper down, it's your choice. Physically, the voices, the cravings, the 
the desires are going to be lessened. They're going to be quieter. But at the end of the day, the mental game kicks in at days 15 or 20. And if you have a really big habit, if you're never really in your life, if you've been overweight your whole life and you've been abusing ultra processed carbs and sugar oh, your whole life, you're still going to end up uh, possibly with 15, 20, 30 full days of this kind of and the one thing that I think is important that people don't really ascribe as a withdrawal symptom is this term called anhedonia. You can look it up. It's the inability to feel joy. You're just going to be down. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be blue because your dopamine receptors have finally said, thank you, sir, for giving me a break. Let me help regenerate. Let me begin the healing process, right? And you don't have this ability to manually manipulate it. You know that what happens when you do that manual manipulation is that it only lasts for 20 or 30 minutes and then you've got it, you're always chasing that high all day, right? You don't, that's any drug, but it's definitely with sugar. And because it's so ubiquitous and free almost, you can always get some. Unconsciously, you, you weren't aware of it. And that's how you lose. That's how you stop. That's how you fail is because you just unconsciously know that if you ingest a little bit of sugar, you, you, uh, you will stop these nasty feelings, right? It'll just go away. And I like to tell folks that this should be, which is not, but it should be a very big learning experience that you've just felt nasty for seven or eight days. You got the big meeting coming up, the big closing, the big boss presentation, whatever it is. And you can't go into that meeting without you know, feeling blue like that, having this lack of self-confidence, this inability to feel joy, this, this pep in your step, whatever. You can't, you can't do it. And so illogically, it, I, you thought I was gonna say logically, but illogically, you will figure out a way to ingest sugar right before the meeting, maybe a little bit of coffee or a little of the Danish at the meeting or whatever. And it will take the edge off of that withdrawal, right? But then at the end of the meeting, you're going to be right back in the same boat, right? You're going to have to keep re-ingesting. So you've got to pick a time period when you're not busy. You can take some true rest time. The summer is a great time to do it. I ex, ex, uh, ask people to at least get a long weekend uh, for the first three to five days, but to get a time block of time that you're not going to be having to do something super important like that, then get a support system behind you. Now, I want to address something that's very important in this process, okay? A lot of people get on me and, and they don't really understand why flour has something to do with this, okay? that flour is something that is um, a part of this withdrawal or part of a need to test your body. We call it a scratch test where you test your body to see you know, how it reacts to ultra processed carbs. Now, if you were able to wear a continuous glucose monitor and you can look them up and we have them on the site or whatever, but you can look them up. But if you were able to do that, you would see what flour does to your uh, glycemia, your, your, your glucose uh, in your body. And here's a suggestion, a super powerful suggestion. If you're going to do this one at a time, do the sugar first, because then you can use the flour kind of as a methadone, right? You can use the flour to step down. So you do the sugar at, for a month or so and still ingest bread and and pasta and what have you, and then do the flour, okay? And just kind of go that way. Now, one last part or addition to this step down, this wean off. A lot of, well, most of the time, all the time, we tell people who are able and willing and really committed to quit the caffeine as well, because caffeine is tied together in the brain, meaning, you know, chocolate and, and sugar, you know, caffeine and sugar, tea, coffee, all of these things have been, and the brain reward chemicals, they don't really know the difference. Once it gets one, it figures the other's coming. And so they're kind of tied together, right? And this kind of speedball effect, that's what John Belushi died of, right? This uh, caffeine up and, and sugar down depressant is a very nice buzz. It's a very high, you know, very nice high. 
And so chocolate in the afternoon is basically taking the edge off your sugar and your caffeine uh, habit, if you will. So another little curveball for you is if you really want to do this, the best way to do it is to do caffeine first for three weeks or a month, sugar next for three weeks or a month, and then do flour at last, okay? We've had a lot of success stories of people doing the sugar, and I'm kind of shocked really when I look in the groups and stuff and I see that people have, I've been off sugar, I've been off sugar, and then I find out they're still using flour and they're still getting the cravings for the sugar. Now, what in hell, excuse me, but what would you ever want to do this for if you still had cravings for sugar? And I guarantee both caffeine and flour will continue your, um, your, your cravings for sugar because the body's saying, and even, <laughs> I should, I'm going to throw you another curveball, even artificial sweeteners, once you get that sweet taste in your mouth, you're going to want to think about real sugar, okay? And where would I put uh, artificial sweeteners into the mix, if you will? I would do that with the sugar, okay? To move away from sweetness, okay? So when you go, uh, when you take out the sugar, you want to make sure you take out the artificial sweeteners as well. What we're trying to do is we're trying to change your, your association to sweet, right? Your taste buds will change rapidly in 10 days or so. And peppers will taste sweet and carrots and macadamia nuts will taste like candy. It really goes fast so that you're, you've all had that experience of having something too syrupy sweet, right? You don't like that. No one likes that, right? That's what the food manufacturers have done. And they've literally weaponized something they call the bliss point. And the bliss point is that point where not too syrupy sweet, not too sour, just perfect, right? And they've done test after test after test, and they keep coming up with this perfect spot that there's crunchability, they do mouthfeel. I mean, literally test over test, they've got billions of dollars to spend. And they, you know, it's not, a lot of this is not our fault, gang. This is not like, this has been a weaponization of a food system uh, for addiction, literally. They literally slide people into MRIs and uh, and test how their brain reward chemicals light up. And I think as I'll leave you, I'll tell you that the science today is and should be centered around not the glycemic index and not the uh, glucose half of the molecule and raising the blood sugar level in your body, but the fructose half of the mo molecule and what I just described, how it lights up your brain reward chemicals. Because this is what keeps you on the stuff, okay? It's not that you're like childish or weak-willed or anything like that. What it is is that you have tapped into a seven to 10 million year old evolutionary process that helps us to find calorie dense and calorie rich sweet, sweet foods like fruit and honey, right? But remember, we only got a little bit of fruit and a little bit of honey once or twice a year not 365 days a year. So we, you know, our search for that has ended and we've been now bludgeoning our brain, excuse me, our brain reward chemicals for decades. And now they are depleted. It's like you haven't done a, a push-up in, in a many, many years. It's hard to do a push-up. The same thing with your brain reward chemicals. You have depleted their ability, their a bill, uh, it's called uh, the, the receptors are down regulated and you've depleted them. So you don't have a lot of them. So they can't make the synapse connection. They can't make the connection to make you feel better, which we're just supposed to be evenly feeling decent, good all most of the time. Instead, we've been on this roller coaster of getting up in the morning with caffeine and sugar and then crashing in the, you know, we got to get off of this roller coaster and heal up and get nice and solid and even. So. Anyway, I love these videos. Send the questions. Just put them at the bo bottom and please subscribe. Uh, like the thing. It helps us get it out to more people. Um, but if you have questions, please, I'll answer all of them on a video. If you just drop them below uh, and, and, and put, put, the, put your question in. So love you guys. Keep up the good work. Uh, and remember, harm reduction. Any amount of sugar reduction is a good thing. Okay. But if you really want to make a commitment, 
to self-actualization. Look that up, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. If you really want to be the best person you can be, give 100% abstinence, flour, sugar, and caffeine a try and see how you do. Just give it six months or a year. Most people never go back. Gang, always a pleasure. Mike, the sugar-free man. We'll talk to you real, real soon. Bye for now.